some sort of lesson or situation is either over or you're reaching the end of it, okay? But your mind right now is in shambles. You're freaking out about all kinds of shit. I honestly feel like this is the very end of a very long and tough cycle for you. And because of what this cycle has been for you in your life, you're probably not seeing too clearly right now. Okay? That's all there is to it. Hello everyone, welcome to Morning Coffee. Thank you guys so very much for tuning in. So yes, we are having plain old, good old morning coffee today. Um, I did check on the transits or the aspects of the day and there's nothing really too major. Um, I will say in terms of, like uh, astrologically speaking, the major aspect of the week would be the uh, new moon solar eclipse on Thursday, June 10th. And I did put out a video talking about that yesterday. Uh, link uh, can be found here if you haven't checked it out. Also, um, link can be found in the description box here on YouTube. Check that out. It's a really nice conversation. Um, in which I talk about, you know, what this aspect or what this uh, situation could mean for you. Um, and also I did end up pulling a little bit of cards at the end of the reading. And then for my Patreoners, there is a bit of an extended version in which we go into some more uh, refined detail in terms of uh, what could you could be experiencing over this uh, new moon solar eclipse. Yeah, but that really is the, the major aspect of the week, okay? Um, so I really feel like <clears throat> uh, if you're going to focus on anything, focus on working with those energies this week. Um, I will say today we do have uh, a square with uh, Saturn and the moon. Um, first thing I thought of when I saw that was try not to be too hard on yourself today. Um, a beneficial aspect though, even though Saturn is squaring the moon, so um, your mental process or your mind could be your thoughts and your feelings could could be really oriented around discipline or um, judgment even um, that that's coming through here again try not to be too hard on yourself this today or while this is happening but then also there's a trine between Saturn and the Sun so that could also represent a, a, a period of you know whatever could be coming to focus in your mind can actually be used or guided to help you to expand on your soul or to get down to the deepest depths of your soul or maybe even what I'm picking up also is try and put into place, put some sort of implementation in place in terms of what will best serve your soul at this time of your life. And then that leads us up to the new, the, the new moon and the solar eclipse on Thursday in which uh, a new moon is, an, is a really opportune time for new beginnings at new starts uh, and starting new projects, starting uh, going after new goals and putting new things into place in your life. Yeah. So your thoughts in terms of what needs to shift, what needs to change for you really could be on hyperdrive right now. Sun, I'm sorry, the moon square Saturn. Okay. Try not to be too hard on yourself, but then allow the trine between Saturn and the sun to illuminate more places where you want, where you need your light to shine or where your light to sh needs to shine even more or where you need to be, bring more of your personality or more of your personal preference into fruition through, and you can do that through the disciplinarianism of, you know, Saturn squaring up with the moon, okay? Okay, that's all I have for today in terms of the astrology. So let's get into the tarot here and see what messages we have for the collective today. Here we go. Hi, spirit. Please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve their highest good and the highest good of all involved. Please give us clear and accurate representation of the energies in terms of these situations, situationships, romances, relationships, and places in which we all need it the most.
Thank you so very much, Spirit. All right, kids. Um, we could be talking about a little bit of heart chakra energy here within these five shuffles. This is one. Um, as I was channeling the energy, uh, you know, pulling it in and getting it into the cards, I did see green. This is two. I did see green as um, the energy was collecting within the cards. Um, so we could be talking about a bit of heart chakra awareness right now. This is three. Okay. Something to do with your heart chakras today. This is four. Uh, I, I'm getting the feeling or the sense of like clearing up some sort of misconception or discrepancy. This is four. Uh, bringing awareness to what's truly within your heart chakra right now. This is five. Okay. Remember, guys, this is a timeless reading. Yeah. So whenever you get into the reading whenever you're guided to watch it or whatnot whatever then that's most likely the message for you in that time although it may not make sense right now it most likely will make sense later on down the road yes all right so what's going on with the collective today what messages do we have for the collective today please spirit yeah okay Overall energy, we do have the Four of Cups. Underneath the Four of Cups, we do have the Eight of Swords. All right? But it's the side of the Eight of Swords in which we see that the woman is actually being, it is loosely tied or is actually unraveling. When I saw the, four, when I saw the Eight of Swords just now, um, I, first of all, I heard liberation. But second of all, the image that I saw, it, it looked like, in a, for a split second, it looked like the ropes that were tied around this woman are falling off of her, okay? Now, you do have the Four of Cups here. I do feel like some of you, or, or for whomever this message is for, you've been kind of tied up for a while. There's been a lot of apathy. There's been a lot of discomfort. There's been a lot of pain, probably on an emotional level. Um, I don't, uh, may, and maybe even a mental level, because we do have the uh, Nine of Swords here. Um, apathy, boredom, um, discontent, dissatisfied with life or with your surroundings, okay? Um, and, and that's what, and I do feel like that's what's caused you to be in this Eight of Swords energy, but I feel like that you're coming out of that at this point, okay? You have the Page of Swords in reverse, you do have the Nine of Swords here, but then you also have Judgment, okay? So uh, a wake-up call, potentially. Um, rising above, resurrection, rebirth. The Page of Swords in reverse is giving me an energy of you guys having gone through a lesson It's interesting because with the Page of Swords in Reverse, I feel like you guys have gone through a lesson and you could say with the Page of Swords in Reverse that the lesson is over. However, um, I am picking up on that. Some sort of lesson or situation is either over or you're reaching the end of it, okay? But your mind right now is in shambles. You're freaking out about all kinds of shit. Um, and you're looking, You're. it's like it, it, with this... With this uh, card here, okay, you do see that we, this gentleman is sitting on their bed in their room, looking outside, and the sun is rising here, okay? But the mental activity, all of the swords, all of the fears that this person is currently focused on, or all the things that are sw swirling around in this person's head, uh, it is kind of obstructing his view of the sun rising, okay? And then here you go, we have the sun represented here, again, on judgment. The sun has risen, um, everything is clear, there's a sense of purity, there's a sense of resurrection. I feel like, I honestly feel like this is the very end of a very long and tough cycle for you, and because of what this cycle has represented for you in your life, or what this cycle has been for you in your life, um, you know, it's been such a struggle. It's been such a difficult time. There's been so much that you've had to deal with, so much that you've had to work on, so much that you've had to handle or whatever. Just the elements of this cycle, I feel like have definitely left you battered and bruised here. And 
there's all kinds of fear and anxiety, but I really do feel like your mind is probably not seeing too, you're probably not seeing too clearly right now. Okay. That's all there is to it. This judgment, judgment here is a good thing. The judge, judgment here feels like it's bringing an end of a really tough cycle to you. And it's not just, what I'm getting here with this, you guys, is that this isn't just on a personal level. I feel like there is a lot that's involved with whatever is going on, whatever this cycle is for you right now. There are a lot of people involved. There are a lot of moving parts. There are a lot of moving pieces or, or something. There's just, there is a, it's much more than just what you see in front of you right now. And I'm not trying to d diminish anyone's feelings or anything like that. But what I'm getting with what judgment is saying to me at this moment is this actually has a lot more to do with others than with just you, I feel like. So somehow I feel like that's going to be working out in your favor. Um, judgment, th th I just heard this judgment here or whatever this is, this is a blessing, okay? Or some of you could be fearing a judgment right now. A wake up call. Now the overall energy is the four of cups to the eight of swords. And I get that there is a little there is there is a level of carelessness that's coming through with this four of cups here. Um, but that carelessness came through because of how defeated you might have felt. Eight of Swords. Eight of Swords isn't necessarily defeat, but um, Eight of Swords does represent you know being bound, being tied, um, mental prison, and all that. And what it feels like here is the level of defeat came through or the levels of feeling defeated came through because of the fact that you, it, it feels like you were almost, or you felt powerless in this situation. It like, there was literally nothing you could do. And so there was nothing you could do, but just sit back and watch it all go down. Okay. But you're coming out of that now, or at least you're not as bound as you might think. Okay, and then my, uh, my, my, um, my eyes were pulled towards the eagle that are on, that's on this card too. And it feels like there's higher wisdom. It feels like there's, it feels like there's something higher, maybe a being or a person that's higher up in the ranks here or something like that, that's going to come to your aid. That's going to help release you from this prison. It could just be your higher self, God's source creator, your angels, whatever. It just feels like there's a higher perspective or it just like literally with this eagle here, it feels like something or someone is swooping down and releasing you from this mental entrapment, okay? But I don't think you see it coming yet because your mind is not clear. You're cluttered. Page of Swords in reverse and the Nine of Swords. There's too much mental activity going on. There are too too many questions why um, not being able to settle your mind, getting caught up in all of the, the fears and the what ifs, but, but okay, let me, I want to go a little bit further here. What's next in this situation, please, Spirit? Well, now we're to the opposite sides of the situation. So you have the Four of Cups here on this side, and again, you have the Eight of Swords on this side. So, but now we're looking at, um, hmm. Okay, next we have the Knight of Wands, the Ace of Swords, and the King of Pentacles. And what this is saying to me, what I think you don't see here, or at least I feel like what's going to help you move forward, what's going to help you really break free from this mental prison, Is either someone coming to your aid here or, or just 
an activation and or an awareness of who you are. And I feel like with this side of the four of cups here, okay, and also looking at this eight of swords point, I feel like you're going to be moving away. It literally feels like you're going to be moving away from this uh, entrapped phase. And what takes, what 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 that takes is becoming aware of just how solid and grounded and sturdy and stable you are. I, I don't know why, but the King of Swords, I'm sorry, the King of Pentacles with the Ace of Swords represents is representing here an awareness of self a solid awareness awareness of self that's going to help you and it's going to help you move forward you have that with the knight of wands okay activation activation of your true self activation of um some form of solidity in your life i also feel like whatever cycle it is you're coming out of or whatever this experience has been it's only going to help you bring it's only going to help you come to a a, a stronger level of being solid with yourself, within yourself, being sturdy, being stable, being grounded. It could also help you um, achieve a sense of groundedness to help with a sense of abundance, connecting with abundance, connecting with greater abundance, okay? I really feel like you're going to be leaving this Eight of Swords state behind. Yeah, and then look at that. Underneath the Eight of Swords, you do have the Hanged Man to the Wheel of Fortune. Okay, now uh, also you also have that with the Five of Cups here. All right, but the Five of Cups only feels relevant in terms of look. You have it's on this side of the card where you don't even see the Three Cups that have spilled. Really, all your focus is pulled to the Two Cups here and this Rose that's growing behind this person. There's something brand new that's really coming through for you here. There could be a level of needing to go through a grieving process, but I, to be honest with you, I feel like you've grieved so much. You've been so mentally caught up for such a long time that whatever is appropriate for this grieving process, whatever that is for you, it feels more like relief, honestly. Because at this point, it's like the at, at, you're at the grieving process, so... Um, you know, you're at a processing phase where it's kind of over at this point, And now you just get to, you know, go through the emotions and feel whatever it is you're feeling, but then turn around, pick up those last two cups and keep moving. Okay. There is a big, there is a big, massive change that's coming here for the collective. Ah, look at this. Okay. 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 I just, I just realized because I was thinking that this feels like a massive change for the collective. And then I remembered we have this new moon on Thursday, okay? Which is a time of new beginnings, new starts, uh, putting new things into practice, putting new things into place in your life. And this new moon, according to, astro uh, according to sidereal astrology, the new moon is in Taurus. The King of Pentacles represents Taurus, okay? So at this time of the new moon here, you have awareness, clarity, truth, where in the past you were confused, conflicted, wrapped up in fear, the what ifs, like all kinds of nightmares and horror stories and, and doomsday and worst case scenarios and all that kind of stuff, unable, unable to, to clear the clutter in your mind to see what's really going on clearly with this page of swords, unable to get a clear answer with this page of swords in reverse and being wrapped up in your mind being wrapped up in the fear, even though outside the window, the sun is rising. A clarity is coming, a bright new day is dawning, but you can't quite see it yet, but you're being called to it. It's being facilitated for you. And then once the sun rises with this, we'll say with this solar eclipse, right? There's the truth, there's the clarity. There's the activation, there's the freedom, Knight of Wands, moving forward, having a sense of direction again, having a sense of purpose, understanding, maybe not completely understanding where it is you're going and what, what it is you need to do, but knowing that you, you're feeling motivated, you're feeling guided, you're feeling ready. You're ready to move forward with the plans that you've been de developing. King of Pentacles is Taurus. Taurus is that fixed energy of the momentum to get you where you wanna go. Okay. 
That's beautiful. That's really, really beautiful. Okay. Let's move on to some clarity here, yeah? Five shuffles. One. Two. Three. Four. And five. All right. I want to start with the Nine of Swords here. Yeah? What is this Nine of Swords energy for the collective? Please do it. What is this Nine of Swords? Okay. Okay. Um, the Nine of Swords is clarified by... Uh, we have the chariot at the bottom of the deck. And then we have that with the hanged man, again, is the hanged man is showing up, and the nine of wands, okay? So, I understand that you might be in a pretty fragile mental state right now. But there is some sort of clarity, there's some sort of understanding, there's some sort of truth that's going to be coming through here for you, okay? Look at how this... How this has landed on the table, I have six cards, three above, three below. In the very center, we have the eight, nine of swords to the ace of swords. The ace to the nine represents a ten. So there is clarity, there is truth, there is an ending coming. Especially, I want to say there's an ending in sight. With the sun kind of rising here on this nine of swords, there is in fact an ending in sight. But all of the elements that have been that are representative of this cycle are kind of like clouding your mind, are kind of like all, it's all coming at you at once, which kind of makes sense. It's almost as if it's that last flood, that last push before you reach the end of the cycle. So keep going, per keep persevering, nine of wands. Don't give up because there is going to be an end to this drama, an end to this these feelings of stagnancy or being held back and there's going to be a change in perspective and awareness that will come through for you that will make things much clearer you just have to keep going you have to just persevere okay um and i feel specifically that this change in perspective that's coming for you is going to help you really get into better alignment with yourself get into a better alignment with your path or your goals or what it is you want to do in life okay yeah, definitely. So then with that said, let's talk about the Page of Swords in reverse here, okay? Page of Swords. What's this Page of Swords in reverse? Please hear it. Okay. Yeah, all right. So... Under, at the bottom of the deck is the Five of Cups. So your 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 emotions are getting the best of you right this moment, okay? It's your emotions that are causing you to not be able to see clearly, that's causing you to question so much, that's causing your mind to be overactive, um, keep searching for answers and not being able to find them, not getting clear on anything like that. The uh, you, first two cards out, you do have the Two of Swords to the Ten of Wands, okay? So... Um, what I want to say is the Two of Swords could help you. The Two of Swords energy could really help you right now in terms of what you would, what you really need to do is just focus on your internal reality. Don't look at the external because the external is riddled with all kinds of what I just heard is is riddled with all kinds of situations or circumstances that you couldn't possibly deal with all on your own. Again, I get this I get this feeling, you guys, that whatever this cycle is we're talking about or whatever this situation is we're talking about, it's more than just you. There is a lot of moving pieces involved with this. There's too much for you 
to handle all on your own. And I feel like there's a sense of overwhelm that's happening for you that's causing your mind to really be out of, basically to go out of control with the Page of Swords in reverse, okay? So don't focus on that. Don't focus on the external. Focus on your internal reality here. Focus on keeping your mind as balanced as possible throughout this, okay? Two other cards have come down, have come out. Um, and they fell face down. It's the Nine of Swords, which I kind of expected to see here. It's the Nine of Swords with the Eight of Pentacles. Some of you are feeling like you haven't done enough of the work, or some of you are fearing that you've been doing the work and yet it's not going to get you anywhere or it's not, it doesn't mean anything or no matter what, how much work, how much you try, it all just seems to go south. But that really isn't the case here. I wanna actually, I wanna clarify a little bit more. Nine of Swords. Nine of Swords, Eight of Pentacles. Yeah, I was just talking through that and I felt like I wanted to get some more information on that because I feel like I, I hit a nerve there. It's like no matter how much you try or how, no matter how much work you do, it seems that it just doesn't work out in your favor or everything doesn't, it doesn't turn out the way you had intended, you had planned, the way you were working towards. And as soon as I was talking about that, I wanted to get a little bit more clarity on that energy. So let's do that. Nine of Swords and Eight of Pentacles. What can you tell us about that, please, Spirit? Okay. Yeah, interesting. All right, it's it's funny because when the next card that came out right after, right as I started that was the Four of Pentacles, and immediately I felt like there was something you needed to let go of. And immediately it was like the roadblocks that you're experiencing are only trying to redirect you. Okay? There's something you need to let go of, but I feel like you're not letting go of it or you're, you're, you're holding on and you're working and working and working towards this out of fear of change, out of fear of a new cycle, okay? Four of Pentacles is representing needing to let go, but also at the bottom of the deck here, you do have the Eight of Cups. There's something you've got to walk away from, but you need to understand that the Empress with the Empress and the Page of Pentacles here, Whatever new direction you're going in, I heard is divinely guided and will be supported and nurtured into life by the universe, but you've got to allow yourself to let go and move forward and walk away from whatever it is you've been working so diligently towards that doesn't seem to be working out the way you had wanted or the, in your favor, okay? Next thing I want to look at is judgment here. What is judgment? Please, Spirit, for the collective... Okay, so whatever it is you're moving towards, what? yeah, see, look, there you go, you guys. At the bottom of the deck, we do have the Ten of Swords now, okay? So the Ten of Swords is officially showing up, not just figuratively between the Ace of Swords and the Nine of Swords. We actually have the ending of the cycle. The end is coming, okay? The end is coming. The end of this really tough cycle is coming. Judgment is bringing you to a level or bringing you to a, an experience or a time in your life where there's greater balance spiritually, maybe even mentally, but there's also greater balance in terms of uh, reciprocity and equal beneficial give and take. But in order to really, in order to answer this call, you guys, there's something that you have to let go of. There's something that you have to walk away from. There's something that you've been diligently working, t working your ass off maybe even overworking yourself that you've just got to let go of. You've got to clear out of your space, okay? And it doesn't even, and, and for some of you, this may not even be a situation in which you really have to do anything extra than just allow the universe to move this or shift this stuff around for you, okay? Yeah, the strongest thing I'm feeling here is that you may be able to just let the universe do it for you. I feel like you're already on, in that trajectory. You're already on your way there. There's not, I don't really think there's anything extra in the process that you need to do to move through this, okay? Last thing I wanna look at is the Ace of Swords. 
Well, yeah, okay. Last thing I'm gonna look at is the Ace of Swords. What is this Ace of Swords? Please, Spirit, for the Collector. We do have the Ace of Pentacles at the bottom of the deck. Um, it is reversed, but I'm going to turn that up right because it wasn't, that was from an old reading. Um, with this Ace of Swords, clarifying the Ace of Swords, you have the Seven of Swords. The Seven of Swords was the first card out, okay? So there's some sort of clarity in terms of deception, uh, deceptive or, or, or um, deception or like getting away with something in some sort of, in some cases, uh, especially when it comes to this judgment or this movement to a next, re a new level or the next reality is bringing greater reciprocity and balance into your life. So there's clarity coming in for you in terms of elements of your reality that are um, deceptive, that were kind of cheating you, that were kind of, you know, not, that were, mm. I don't know what other word to use there. So I think you guys, I think you guys kind of get it. But with that, we have the King of Pentacles again, uh, the Emperor now, and the Nine of Cups. So the, I, feel, I definitely feel like the King of Pentacles is representing this uh, new moon solar eclipse in Taurus, right? But the King of Pentacles coupled with the Emperor, I feel like you're this clarity that's coming through for you here in terms of some deceptions or deceptive elements of your reality, you're going to be stepping in the into the uh, driver's seat. You're going to be stepping into your power and putting things in place, putting uh, systems in place or putting getting something into motion that really serves your satisfaction here, really serves your happiness and your wish fulfillment, okay? Even, even, if, even if it's just on a... Mundane level? I don't know. That doesn't sound so bad to me if it's on a mundane level because that's where it kind of starts. You know, start out small, get your, find satisfaction in the small things, in the little things in your life, the little things that make you, that like uh, keep your day solid or keep your, your energy solid just, you know, on a daily, day to day basis. And then from there, you can expand on it in bigger ways. But right now, this closing cycle is providing you with an opportunity to do that to begin with, okay? To get the ball rolling in that sense, if you will. Yeah? Okay. Let's get our closing oracle guidance. Where do we want to get that from? Crystal Mandala. All right. That sounds great. Okay, five shuffles here. One. Two. Three. Four. Closing Oracle Guidance, please, Spirit. Ooh. Excellent. You have card number 33, which is a master number. Ascended Master Helios and Citrine, your time to shine. We bring you the blessing of your time to shine. On the divine path, you gain empowerment through surrender and alignment with divine consciousness greater than your own. 
As you choose to surrender into higher consciousness through prayer and intention, you are held in a field of divine protection. You also gain strength, wisdom, and understanding. You release fear and gain love's power. You become increasingly radiant, discovering more of your own divine identity. At some point on your path, whilst this is always happening for you on the inner planes, you will be ready to perform a similar function on the outer planes in the world of forms. This is when you will be asked to bravely shine your light to help those in need, perhaps lost or in darkness of some sort in the physical world. Uh, I think I'm going to leave it there. There you guys. There, uh, there you have it, guys. <laughs> Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful for you. I love you all so very much. I hope you have a fantastic day. And I look forward to connecting with you again for our next cup of coffee tomorrow morning. Yeah? Take care. Mwah! Bye! <laughs>